Welcome to another fun accounting lesson. Today we are looking at debtors reconciliation based on grade 10. Debtors reconciliation. So I have a question here and the documents will be available in the description. So you're free to download them. So it's Aramis Traders. The information below relates to Aramis Traders for the period 30 June. Ending 30 June uses a markup of 40% on cost for all goods sold. So we're going to prepare the debtors control account and the debtors list. When we start with a debtors recon question like this, your first step would be to put in your format. So yeah, I've got an open debtors control and my debtors list. So first step, format. We have our balance. So remember, debtors control, it's an asset. Plus on the debit, minus on the credit. So I first put in my balance. Balance brought down. I'm going to put it into a bracket because we have not yet went through the errors and emissions. 216. Two one zero. Then they have sales on the debit side. Yes, if we sell to a debtor, they would owe us more money. So day thirty sales. D J. I'm gonna open my bracket. Three hundred and ten thousand nine hundred and twenty. Then there's a refund from the bank. Refunds are done through the CPJ. So it's bank refund CPJ. Let's open the bracket 600. Then we have journal debit. So this is if we increase a debtors control account with interest on overdue debtors or we are correcting errors, or even transferring to a creditor's account. So, journal debits from the general journal. Open a bracket, 1,820. On the credit side, if a debtor pays us, day 30, bank, and discount allowed. Open a bracket, 124,380 from the CRJ. Then we have debtors allowances. So this is in the event a data returns goods that they've previously purchased. So on the credit side, debtors allowances open a bracket 55580 and it's from the DAJ then we have journal credits if we are correcting errors or transferring a data to a creditor's account journal credits general journal 1600 then we get to our debtors list. So remember now, in debtors control, a debit is a positive balance, credit negative balance. So we'll start inputting their balances, opening a bracket. S. Tyler has 80,000. Putin is 74,800. Quigler has 72,400. Armwood has 18,900. Dyer has 66,750. Lopo, you can see, has a credit balance, which means he starts off with a negative balance where he might have uh, overpaid us. 1,800. Jay Phillip. Debit balance seven thousand two hundred, 
and then mark room 18,000. So that would be your first step to open up your control account and your list. Open your balances with brackets. So that's our very first step. Then we can start with the errors and the emissions. So first, number one, the debtors control balance on June the 1st was overstated by 6,700. Overstated means it's too much. So I'm going to minus 6,700 from the balance. Number two, the total of the debtors allowances column in debtors allowance journal was undercast by 380. So it's 380 and too little. So therefore I'm going to add 300, sorry, 316. I'm going to add 316. Number three. A credit invoice, so credit invoices are recorded in your debtor's journal. So a credit invoice sold to AHA mode has not been recorded by the bookkeeper. The cost price of the merchandise was 3700 So with debtor's control, we are working with the selling price. So once again, I have seen students that are still unable to calculate the correct selling price and cost price. So I always use this triangle. So I have my selling price on top, cost price one comma profit. And we remember in instructions, they clearly stated the markup is 40%. So if it's 40%, we will use 1, 14. So now I'm looking for the selling price. You see they give me this cost. So I'm looking for the selling price. I'll close selling price. So I'll close selling price. We'll take the cost price, multiply one comma profit one comma fourteen. So it's three thousand seven hundred times one comma forty. One comma profit. So that's my selling price. Now they clearly said mm, it has not been recorded, which means both the debtors control and the debtors list will be affected. So at sales. We will add 5,180 and our mode, if we, if we sell to him on credit, he will owe us more money, 5,180. Number four, transfer the credit balance in the debtors list of P. Lope to his account in the creditor's ledger. So what would happen to this transaction? We have a debtor's control, creditor's control. So he has a balance in the credit side, right? His balance is 1,800. When I transfer him, your debtor's control will increase with 1,800. And this is done in the general journal. And every debit has a credit. So in your general journal, journal debit, we will plus 1,800. And Klope's account will have to plus 1,800. And it's done. Number five, an amount of 400 received from Brigo via EFT was recorded in the journal, but not transferred to his account. 
if your journal is correct, the data's control account is correct. So we need to fix it in the list. So our data is Kriegel, an amount received, so he paid us. So his account I have to minus 400. Six, a receipt issued to S. Tyler. So remember receipts are done in your CRJ. So a receipt issued to Tyler for 19,800 cash received was recorded correctly in the journal. So once again, if the journal is correct, we only fix the list. But posted to these account is 18,900. So there was money too little. So let's see. I'm going to use that first see the difference. 19,800 minus 18,900. There's a difference of 900 Rand. So what happened to this person? In his control account, he paid, but we wrote it as 18,900. That amount's 900 too little. So I'm going to add 900 and look what happens. It has to be on the minus side. So we're going to minus his account with a further 900. And this happened to Tyler. So Tyler minus 900. Done. An entry in respect of goods sold on credit. So on credit is DJ to T Marku to the value of 3000 was entered correctly in the DJ. So the debtors journal. The control account is correct. But was entered to the wrong side. If something is entered to the wrong side of the debtor's personal account, you have to put it in twice. That's the secret. Let me show you why. So for transaction seven, here is the account of Marku. He's a debtor plus minus. So now they are stating that we sold to him on credit, but this was entered on the wrong side. So it was entered on the credit side 3000. So this is what they have done. So I'm going to take it out, correct the mistake. So the first time you enter it, you are only canceling the mistake. The second time, we enter now we show that there was good sold on credit. He sold to me, owes us more money. So at Marcus account, I'm going to add 3000 to cancel that mistake. Add another 3000 to show that there were credit sales taking place. Next transaction, a payment of 12,000 received from Putin was correctly recorded in the journal. If your journal is correct, your control account is correct. But was recorded in the account of Dyer. So add Dyer, Dyer did not pay us. So let's add 12,000 to his account. He did not pay us. Who did pay us? Putin paid us. So Putin minus 12,000. Last one. J. Philip, whose account was three months in arrears, was charged interest at 5%. So let's see what he owed us. J. Philip owed us 7,200. times 5% times 3 over 12. That's the calculation for interest. So it's 7,200 times 5% times 3 divided by 12. 
90 Rand. So we're going to charge him 90 Rand interest. And interest is shown in your general journal on the debit side. So we're going to add 90 Rand. And I will add 90 Rand to the account of J. Philip plus 90 Rand. So once my errors and omissions are completed, we need to close off the account. So we start our balance is then 209,510. Write it neatly. 209,510. That's better. Sales will be 316,100. The bank refund, nothing happened. It stayed 600. Journal debit will be 3,710. Discount, bank and discount allowed. CRJ, nothing happened. It stayed 124,380. DIJ will then be 55,940 and journal credits 1,600. So we can now close off this account. When you close off your account, let's draw our total lines on both sides. You add up your biggest side, which is your debit side, 529,000. 920, put it on both sides, 529,920 minus everything on top gives me 348,000. And that is our balance carry down and bring it down for next month. July the 1st. Balance brought down three hundred and forty eight thousand. Right, let's close off our list. So on the debit side, this will be seventy nine thousand one hundred. Putin seventy four thousand eight hundred minus twelve thousand sixty two thousand eight hundred. Krigler, 72,400 minus 400, 72,000. Then 18,900 plus 5,180 is 24,080. Dyer, 66,730 plus 12,000. Gives me 78,730. If my balance will be zero. J. Philip now owes us 7,290. And Mark who owes us 24,000. You say a little player, please balance. You want us to balance. If we add up our debit side, we get 348,000. What we mean by does it balance? You want to ensure that your balance brought down from your control account is the same as the list of totals. They have to be the same because they are compiled from the same information. Both these are compiled from the journals. So we want it to balance. And if we do, we know that there's no mistakes. I hope you enjoyed and you learned from this video. You're welcome to in the comments, pop me a question if you have any further questions regarding data's recon. Bye-bye, everybody.